Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know, this is still 4F Beauty. If I've done my editing job properly, I should be in black and white right now. And if you hear any weird noises, it's not me. It's the neighbours who apparently have workmen in. Thankfully, it, it only affects the last sort of five minutes of the film. It will, however, impact on the number of films I was going to get done today when I actually have decent lighting to film for the first time in a week. But, enough of my woes. You are here because you saw the thumbnail, the title, and maybe even the description where you've seen that I am trying out a new indie brand from Europe called Burnovich. So if you want to find out how I discovered them, how these perform, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you have the best seat in the house. And for those of you who have missed him, he's no longer on night shift. Sammy the Sloth Straw makes his triumphant return to tell you now is the time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. As you can see, I actually have sunlight today, which is lovely. So, yay. Um, I will have shown you uh, these in the intro. Let's just open it up so you can see them a little better without the light dazzling, hopefully. There we go. I'm going to put swatches of these up here. And talk you through which ones I bought. <clears throat> These are all Burnovich, which I discovered. Which I discovered when Amy Loves Makeup did a film on them, and she said they were comparable to her Davina and her Cleona shadows, which of course are really difficult to get over here. Uh, so the first one I got at the top there is a matte number one four seven. The next row are their sparkle row, the sparkle variety, which all start with X. So there's X21, X20, X7 and X2. Then the bottom row is their creative sets, and that's 194 and 164. So you can see they are a little bit lush. Um, and I just, when I saw Amy use them, I could not resist. I know I'm meant to be not buying as much this year, but it's a new indie brand I've not tried before. It's an indie brand based in Europe. They're in Belarus, which is Russia, isn't it? Is that technically Europe? I think Russia for... Does Russia fall under Europe or does Russia fall under Asia? Anyway, it's over there somewhere. Look, unless it had a Commonwealth war grave there, I'm crap at geography, okay? When I worked for the uh, Royal British Legion at, at um, the pilgrimage department, I knew everywhere with a, with a cemetery. <laughs> anyway, um, I could not resist. I had to get them. Um, and I was really, really pleased that I didn't get clobbered with any tax on arrival, which is good too. Right. This remains a teaching channel. By virtue of that, I zoom in very, very close when I'm doing the tutorial. It's just my eyes on screen, so if you are watching me on a small phone screen, 
um, and your eyesight's not what it could be, you can still absolutely see what's going on. Um, there's a couple of reasons for this. The main one is so that you can see what's going on. Uh, but also, I I wince a lot with pain. And it's much easier for me to cut out when I have to suddenly stop with pain without you noticing the cut. Um, or being distracted by me going, oh. Um, it does mean that when I'm cleaning the brush or adding more pigment, etc., you do get a lovely shot of my little widow's peak here, but that I think is a fair payoff to be able to see what's happening. Now, I've got deep set eyes. A lot of people, including big beauty gurus, say they've got hooded lids, and I look at it and I think, mm, no, you have deep set eyes. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute. Again, it's just going to be my eyes on screen, where I talk you through how to work out which eye type you have and what the workaround is for each eye type. Because although the makeup wears in a very similar way throughout the day, the best application method so you get the, the best initial result and the most longevity from your look, you have to apply it slightly differently. So I'll talk you through the two different methods of application. Okay. Once that's done, I will be back to play with these pigments and I cannot wait. So uh, here's your clip and I'll see you at the other end of it. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over yeah. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. 
I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with my one of my Spectrum um, Mean Girls brushes. The B06 or the You Go Glen Coco or for those of you who don't have this particular set, a big round fluffy brush. Um, I only bought one mat, but it is the kind of mat that I tend to go for anyway. For If I'm doing just a one transition shade and then focusing on the lid, that's the sort of shade I go for. So a cool toned greyish mauve rather than a brown because I feel that this particular shade works best with pretty much any colour you put against it. So I'm going to start off, oh okay there's a fair amount of kick up with this. It's not a problem just means I'll just pick that powder up next time when I come back. Right, um, as always, holding the brush at the end, bracing the end of the brush handle against my hand to stabilise this end. And I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz of Blending, which is natural turns towards the nose, a fleck when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do this is twofold. If I rely on the windscreen wiper, I'm 46. I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. If I just do the windscreen wiper, I get those telltale white lines, the barcoding or the tiger stripes. By doing the Viennese Waltz blend, you are very gently manipulating the lid around, not causing any additional damage, but making sure that you don't get those lines. Uh, it's not just age and weight loss that can cause that issue because I know teenagers who've always been slim that have a similar problem. Right. I always start at the outside edge because if it does deposit too much pigment, it's sure for goodness sake. It's much easier to um, sort it out if your nose isn't in the way. Okay. I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow and I'm going to start applying this shadow which is extremely pigmented because I, I tapped a lot of that off that's good to know And I'm really just fluffing the edge of that out. <clears throat> so I'm not adding any more pigment, but I'm really just softening 
the edge there because I'm just going to be using the one colour on my lid today in terms of matte shadow. Because I really want to give the shimmers their moment in the sun, so to speak. I don't often do this because I do like to, um, to have a slightly deeper shade on the outer edge. Next door's kids running up and down the path. <laughs> Love them to bits, but oh my god, when the doorbell keeps going like that. But it does make life a lot easier for me when people come to the door. Because it means I can answer it. And if I'm having a bad day, I can tell them to wait, I'm coming, kind of thing. Yeah, um, I do normally put a deeper colour through the crease. But today I really just want to focus on those beautiful, beautiful shimmers. I'm going to pop a little bit of this just on the outside edge of the mobile lid. Where I would normally put the deeper shadow. I just, I don't like taking, unless I'm doing a full cut crease, I don't like bringing the shimmer right to the outer edge. Probably because my eyes water an awful lot. Um, they always have done. So, and now just repeat that process this side. So, start off with. This first row. Now the reason I do, and I do this when I'm doing multiple shades as well, I always finish each colour before I move to the second. The reason I do this is because with my fibro, um, one of the symptoms I get is random swelling. Now normally it's my calves, shins, ankles ankles, feet, hands, wrists, etc. But I do sometimes find that the skin on my eyelid puffs up. It looks very similar to conjunctivitis but without the discharge and the redness and the actual infection. And when that happens, um, even though I'm doing exactly the same shapes, as I'm doing now, they'll look different. So like this one will look more rounded and this one will suddenly look flat or dipped. Um, so it gives me the opportunity to adjust the shape one side so that when my brows are relaxed and I'm looking forward they look the same shape. And if you put all of the shadows on you're going to be able to see there's an issue, but you're not necessarily going to know which shadow it is that's causing the problem. I mean, you would today because we're only using the one shadow, but you, you know what I mean. I hope. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, then I do sincerely hope but tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, well then I hope it's as fabulous as you are, darling. Can you sort of mean about how this particular shade, where it is more cool toned, just I mean, I, I really like it, but then I'm, I'm very neutral, cool-toned undertone on my skin. 
Um, but I do find that the, the sort of the warm toned brown that everyone uses doesn't always work with every colour that you want to put on the lid. So. Right. Now it's time for the fun bit. Now, the first time I use new shimmers like this, I don't do a cut crease because I want to see how much opacity they have because some of them are topper shades, some of them don't have a base, they're designed to be put over the top of a different colour. Um, so I don't do that as a rule. And I always wet them after I've got the pigment on the brush because it helps to prevent fallout and if it's one of those ones where it says oh apply it with your finger you tend to get the same amount of shimmer if you wet the brush. If I find that it's not applying as nicely as I want with a fibre brush I do have a silicone brush that I can pull in if necessary. Now once I've applied the pigment to the brush because you never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush I use a little bit of this is just a setting spray to wet the brush but you can use anything you can use um, a moisturizing spray like MAC or Mario Badescu uh, you can use a priming spray setting spray finishing spray you can even just save an empty bottle and put fresh water in it each time you're going to do your, your face. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start off with that gorgeous peachy shade. Because I cannot resist it. The sun is just glinting off it in a beautiful, beautiful way. This is their sparkle range, which is not a pressed glitter, but it's definitely, you can definitely feel that it's loose pigments pressed together. So. Now the ferrule is wet, so I'm going to pop that in my knuckles and spin. Oh, you can really see the duochrome shift there, can't you? Look at that. Um, that dries the ferrule off because the last thing you want is moisture coming down and loosening the glue that holds the bristles in place. So let's start off applying this and see how we go. Super pretty. Not amazingly base pigmented. Would possibly work better over a shadow or a cut crease. But super pretty nonetheless. Now with my left eye, um, because that was pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid, and when I say a kid I mean five years old, um, I've got super deep creasing that side, which gives me an awful lot of trouble in terms of applying pigments like this. What I have to do is break my own rule about never pulling your lid apart around because if I don't what happens in these super deep creases just here the pigment builds up loosely rather than being blended onto the lid and then as it dries it falls into my eye and down my face which is both painful dangerous and unsightly but the way that I do it so I cause as little additional damage as possible 
I only pull the lid out far enough to straighten the creases. I apply whatever shade I'm going to be using as quickly as I can, making sure it's fully blended out across the creased area. And then I gently pop it back. I don't pull it out round my ear roll and I do not just let it spring back. But you can see, I hope, how much more this lid moves in comparison to this lid when I was applying the colour. Clean the brush off. And now I have to go in to this teal. I cannot resist it. And yes, this may not be colours that you would necessarily think to put together, but long term viewers will know if there's a makeup rule, I've probably broken it along the way somewhere. Women in their faulties shouldn't wear shimmer in the crease. Try stopping me. Women in their faulties shouldn't wear bright colours. Really? All of these women in their faulties shouldn't. The only one I actually agree with is baking. Because that does your skin. Right, I'm just going to use the very tip of the brush to buff the edge and to very lightly drag the peach and the teal together. That is super pretty. I'm going to grab a little bit more peach, I think. These are the kind of pigments that you probably would find easier to use with um, just your finger. But I don't mind doing that. Super, super pretty. And then obviously I'm going to use the same colour on my other eye. This is the biggest problem though when you're you know based in either the UK or Europe you see some gorgeous gorgeous pigments from places like Davina, Luxe, um, Cleona but then when the pigments are sort of 12 to 16 bucks each then you have to factor in shipping costs to the UK. Then when they get here, you get 20% tax on top, plus a handling fee of anything up to 25 quid, depending on which particular company they're using in the UK to do the deliveries. And you can end up with, you know, five or six shadows costing you nearly a hundred quid, which just, it really prices us out of the market. 
And yes, I understand that indie companies where they buy things in smaller batches can't get the huge discounts that big companies do. But I do still wish that they would, you know, have maybe five or six indie companies club together to get a decent delivery cost to Europe and to the UK or get a UK or European distribution hub so that we don't get hit with massive charges. This is just so pretty. I'm just going to pull some of that peach and pick up a bit more of that peach I think. Pretty are those? Ooh. Right, my lovely ones. I'm going to pause you. I'm going to chuck some foundation and whatnot on. And I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, I've got a little while to wait. But for you, my darlings, it's going to be completely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hey, I am back. I think I've zoomed you in a little bit. Too close. There we go. Uh, the soap brows kind of turned into werewolf brows today, but uh, I'm, I'm quite loving it, so they're going to stay as they are. Uh, I'm going to grab my... This is my elf. They call it the C brush. I just call it a chunky blender myself. Because obviously I only have the one matte shade. I'm just going to run that along my lower lash line. This reminds me so much of Born Fresco from um, Modern Renaissance. Which is still my favourite shade to use as the transition. To the point that when I got rid of, um, <clears throat> when I decluttered Modern Renaissance to a friend because I wasn't using it, I ended up buying Buon Fresco as a single because it was the only shadow that I still missed. Right. In the sparkly. I've used these two. I think I'm going to pop this up under my brow and this on my inner corner. Just to see how it goes. I'm using a super cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago now, to be quite honest. Oh, this one might make a pretty highlight. Although I do want to try my. Lydos Mars Melter highlight on its own because the only time I've used it so far I've used it on top of a different highlight right and then I'm going to go into the I don't even know what colour to call this like a lavender almost pop this very carefully on the inner corner bring it along under the tear duct and just blend it in like so these are super pretty And super reflective and I want to buy more of them but I'm meant to be on a low buy but they are 
extremely, extremely pretty. Amy loves makeup, I blame you for this. This is completely your fault for introducing me to them as a brand. Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you. That is so nice. I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to lob some highlight on, some mascara, some lippy, do something with the hair. I'll be back with my finished look and my first impressions on Bernovich. Again. Instant. There we go. Uh, the finished look. I did use Mars Melter for my highlight. It's very glittery. There's not a huge amount of base colour to it, which looking at it in the pan. It's probably just as well. Uh, but I like that. My mascara is my Clarins that my friend Hedda sent me. Uh, Lippy, I've got the Ow! Sugar and Spice Gerard Lip Pencil and Fenty Unbutton because it's slightly too light for me to wear without a liner. But with a liner, it makes my lips look so. I quite like that. So, what do I think? Obviously, I haven't used these two down here yet, but I have swatched them and played with them a little bit. Um, I really like these. I can completely agree with what Amy said. They are lovely, lovely pigments. They went on. Well, you saw they went on really easily. Uh, not a huge amount of fallout from them, even when I use them dry. Um, I'm really gonna have to, really gonna have to try and put some self-control on to stop myself from getting more of these because I want all the sparkle ones. Right, my lovelies, I really hope that you have enjoyed this, uh, this little trip into a new indie company. Um, I certainly have fun trying out new brands. I love it. It's part of, the, part of the joy of makeup is discovering new brands to play with. Of course, it does mean that my collection gets a huge... A declutter sock will be employed again very shortly. But that's it for this. Stomach is growling. Oh, it's nearly midday. That's possibly why. Seeing as how the last thing I ate was at five o'clock this morning, and that was a toasted bagel. Mm. Anyway, that's it for this film. It'd be awesome if you could. Hit the like button for me, leave me a comment, maybe even share it. Uh, it does really help with the algorithm and hopefully it will help with keeping you subbed to me because YouTube are still unsubscribing people. There's no rhyme or reason to who gets unsubscribed. Some people have never been unsubscribed, some have been unsubscribed three or four times. Um, some of the ones that have been unsubscribed rarely interact with the channel aside from watching some comment on every film so I hopefully a comment or a like or something will help keep you on the list of for a family because I miss you when you go and I hope that you miss me but they are very sneaky. You've got to be kidding me. I get a day with decent light to be able to film. The neighbours have workmen in. Let's try and ignore them. 
YouTube do keep leaving my films in your feed so it's not obvious you've been unsubscribed um, they also knocked certainly for me on all the channels that I'd got notifications set they'd all been knocked back to personalised and although they're not really sending emails at the moment that I, as far as I can see if yours have all been knocked back to personalised if they do decide to flick the switch and send them again you're not going to get anything so it's worth double checking that as well uh, if you're new here however hi hello welcome I hope you enjoyed it uh, this is this is pretty much what happens on this channel um, I witter on about everything and nothing uh, sometimes important things sometimes frivolous matters usually whilst applying coloured pigments to my face and ooing and ahhing over how pretty they are if that sounds like the kind of thing you don't uh, mind watching it would be awesome if you too would join the 4F family we are the nicest family on YouTube it's very easy to do all you've got to do is hit that red subscribe button turn it from red to grey then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually start sending them again soon. In the meantime, as well as my rather large backside, I have a very large back catalogue of films you can watch. I have other reviews like this with tutorials, I have collabs, challenges, tags. I even read you my favourite poem, which I'm told is very relaxing. <sighs> so as I've said, what feels like time immemorial now. Grab a drink, grab a snack, make a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy and indulge and I just hope your neighbours aren't doing the same as mine right now. Hmm. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fast and I will see you next time, hopefully with less interruptions. Bye for now.